All right, back to hardware. <laughs> hardware 2.0. Hardware 2.0. So we're going to start a little bit of hardware. We have the classifications. So in hardware, as I said before, that it has a part number, and it used to be like an AN something or another, and then we switched to MS. They did, not me. Um, then now it's NAS, but you still can find stuff that has an AN part number, an MS part number, an NAS part number. So uh, you can get all three of them. Do you ever think like they're going to like out phase or phase out? Possibly, yes. All something else. Who knows? Fourth classification. Fourth classification, that's right. Now, well, I don't have to think I have this in my notes, but what's really <laughs> bizarre is. You know, at one point, not that long ago, that's just the way it was. You're working on an airplane, and you either had to have an AN, an MS, or an NAS piece of hardware. But it's not that way anymore because uh, Light Sport, um, Light Sport aircraft, you know, such as the Icon and things like that that are that are produced. Um, <coughs> I'm just trying to think of another one. I just lost it. Anyway, these Light Sport aircraft with these Rotax engines and such. <coughs> Uh, they're built under SAE specs, mm -hmm. so ASTM, I believe it is. So, isn't anyway, the, isn't the Cessna the 160? The 160. Sky? Yeah, I don't know if Cessna does that, but a lot of these <coughs> other ones, they're built under a spec that allows you to use just aircraft, uh, hardware store hardware. That's what they're built with. That's what you're allowed to use. So this doesn't really count for that. This is more, I don't want to say real airplanes, because they're real airplanes. <laughs> they certainly cost over a hundred thousand dollars. I think, what is the icon? It's close to a million dollar aircraft. And then there's like the. Million million dollar aircraft? Huh. There's, there's the Cessna 162, the Icon A5, the, the Technam P2002 Sierra. There's the Remos. That's the word I always, I always forget. Remos. It's like I can picture it. I just want to say the Flying Egg. From now on, when I say the Flying Egg, you say. Remos. Remos. Thank you. Looks like something like you would do. There's a work from work that I'm in that like the Remos is like seen as like this awesome aircraft. I, I've worked the on Remos it. GX. Yeah, the Remos GX. Anyway. Oh yeah, that's an A. Getting back to hardware. <coughs> the right pin here. Pin. Okay. Um, let's just. It has to be point number four because that's what's in my notes and it's really two under hardware. So let's talk about bolts first of all. The nice thing about bolts, regular vanilla flavored, run of the mill bolts are still AN bolts. And God bless them for that. So we have regular old bolts, and we covered this in 309. So that is a regular old AN bolt, is what we would call it. Um, there's all different kinds of bolts, as we're going to look at. But we have to know a couple of things about this. One, this part right here in the middle with no threads is called the? A grip. A grip. I have to just read that right now. You can call, the whole thing would be the shank, really. Um, and you can take the shank, and if you make it into a point, it becomes a screw. Jiff. So, <laughs> stick with me. All right, so the whole thing would be the shank. Uh, but this part's the grip. What does grip mean? It's the length it's of the suit. The material, the material compressing the goods. Material, yeah. So, what is the formula for finding the uh, length of a bolt? It is grip time. No, just kidding. Right. <laughs> 1.5D. Grip plus however many yeah. guys Okay, so the like. grip is where we, we the material should be bolted together. Um, maybe I have it written down somewhere, maybe I don't, but your highest stress concentration is built up. Built up in this area right here for obvious reasons. It starts to neck down. This is where the threads start. And what you do not want is you do not want your material to end somewhere near these first few threads. Preferably it would go beyond that into this area or back up into the grip and then you would use washers to fill up the space. So that's just a, a point of fact when you, you know, just grab an eel bolt and anything will work as long as it fits in the hole. Well, that's not necessarily true. All right, so the length is not including the head. Yes. And we have already learned a little bit about this. I will come back to that. All right, bolts. So, let's see, we have parts of a bolt. <coughs> parts of a bolt. We have the overall length. Still listening to an old time in here. Overall length equals what? Shank plus head. 
grip plus uh, threads, which is the shank, <coughs> not the head. Do not count. Uh, what is the grip? The non-threaded. And of course the threads are the threads. Diameter. The diameter of a standard well, diameter of a lot of bolts are going to fall this way, but right now we're talking about the standard AN bolt. The diameter is measured in 16 inch. Measured in one sixteenth inch increments. <coughs> Starting with Not Starting with the three sixteenths. Three sixteenths, which is also a number ten. Also a number ten. It's not a number ten bolt. It's a three sixteenths bolt, but it corresponds to number ten screw. Same size. So it's three sixteenths. So that would be an AM three, AM three, and then what comes after that? Uh, four sixteenths, which is also known as quarter inch, quarter inch which is an A N four. Four. All right. And it goes on and on up to about one and a quarter, I think it is. But anyway, that's what we do it. The length. Let me see. Oh, never mind. I've got it. So max would be a A N ten. What's that? Sorry, max would be a. The I should go to a 20. I might not say dash 20. I'll go up to a dash 20. Yeah. That's the. That's not the length. Oops. I'm sorry. That's. Yep. Yeah. No. Let me see. Yeah. Blue book it says I do. Yeah. My notes say ranges from 3 16ths up to 20 16ths. So you go all the way up to 20 16ths. Hmm. So what would that be? An AN? 20. 20. 20. And 20. <laughs> All right, diameter, length. Length measured in eight. One eighth inch increments. Uh, backing up, so diameter. If you take a micrometer and you use a micrometer and you measure it, you're like, ah, oh, Kevin, it's not exactly 3 sixteenths, it's a little tiny bit over. What does that make it? 3 sixteenths. 3 sixteenths is the nominal, or 4 sixteenths, the nominal. It's like the target, right? The average, what it's supposed to be. But it may be a little bit more, a little bit less. I never measure them in micrometer. Uh, length is measured in 1 eighth inch increments. It would be very expensive to mass produce bolts that were exactly to the nearest eighth. So they're not. They're generally speaking a little longer than that, maybe about another sixteenth. So if you're measuring a bolt and you're like, well, it's really close to one inch, but it's just shy of one and it's a little bit, a little bit shorter than one inch, then is it a one inch? No. no. Like They're made longer, never shorter. So if you measure it at one inch, you're like, ah, oh, it's almost one inch, but a little bit short, that means it's the next size down, which is seven, eight. seven eighths. And you're like, well, but it's pretty long for seven eighths. Yeah, well, it's still seven eighths. It's not a one inch. So measured one eighth inch increments. Um, you're not going to get a one eighth because you have to have room for a washer and a nut. And the nice thing about A and hardware is the length of the threads is determined by what's by whatever it is that takes a couple of washers and the bolt. You can't get an A and say you want an A and bolt that has threads all the way down into here. You're not going to get it. The threads are fixed size based on the diameter of the bolt. So 3 16 bolt, threads are that much. Quarter, a little bit longer. 5 16 a little bit longer. And they just get longer as the bolt gets longer because the nuts get taller. 
And so the threads are designed so you can fit, well, maybe about three to four washers and the nut, and that's it, no matter what size you have. So you can't get longer threads on these hand bolts. All right, so the smallest bolt you could get in an AM3 would be a head, a very small bit of grip, because you're always bolting something together, and then just enough threads for a washer and a nut. And that would put it, I think, a four. I think it's the smallest I've ever seen. So, length measured in eighth increments, that's the dash number, so it'd be a dash four, would be four eighths, which would be? Half inch. Half inch. Half inch long. Then you're gonna have a five, which is five eighths. Uh, five eighths. Then we have a dash six, which is three six eighths or three quarter. Three quarter. Then we have a dash seven, which is seven eighths. Then we have a dash eight, which is a uh, you don't. You don't. Dash ten. The very next one is dash ten. <clears throat> so the second number, this is in inches. And then this number is an eighths. So that is one inch, zero, eighths. What comes next? 11. 11, so that's one inch and? One eighth. One eighth. And it goes on and on and on until we get to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 is one inch and? Seven eighths. Seven eighths, and the next one is? 20. 20, which is? Two inches. Two and inches no and eights. no weights, all right? And just keeps going that way. <clears throat> I don't know what the longest one is. So if we take this convention right here and we talk about AN hardware, <clears throat> it would look like an AN four dash 17. The, uh, so the, see. So that is the what? <coughs> four is the what? Okay. Four is the 16. Diameter, Diameter in 16. 16th. And that is? One and seven eighths. One and seven eighths. The length? Length. Sixteen. Inches. Length eighths in, an inch. Yeah. <coughs> um, I'll put eights, but it's not 17 eighths, it's length and eighths up to one inch. Then first number is inches. Second number is eighths. So for this one, <coughs> it would be a four sixteenths or a quarter inch diameter with a length of one and seven eighths. That is correct. Quarter inch bolt, it's one and seven eighths inch long. All right, in the middle, so the dash, dash means? Stainless steel. Um, corrosion, not corrosion, uh, uh, cad plated. Cadmium plated. CAD plated steel. CAD is short for cadmium, which I, C A D M M, is how you spell it. <laughs> CAD plated steel it is gold in color. At least it is nowadays. If you go to the way back, which is to say way time ago, CAD plating was clear. And so what you'd get is a piece of, it would look very similar to my microphone color, just a silver. So it'd be silver, because that's what the base metal looks like. The base metal polished out is gonna be silver, and then they put cad plating clear over it, so it'd be like a clear coat just on it. So, But they changed that to gold, because it's really hard to distinguish stainless steel from that. So the dash means it's cad plated steel. Um, if you have an H right there, it means means the head is drilled for safety wire. If you have a C, it means corrosion resistant steel.
which would be silver in color or stainless steel colored. So you can't have a dash and an H? Yes, you can. Okay. Not. <laughs> he is correct. Um, so what if I wanted a drilled, I wanted to make this one a drilled head. Then it would just be an AN4 Hotel 17. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the hole in the shank? We haven't got to that. What if I wanted a corrosion resistant steel with a hole in the head? <clears throat> okay. AM4 Charlie Hotel 17. So just additional. Yes. Okay. So if it's just cab plated, you get a dash. If there's a hole in the head, you get an H. If it's corrosion resistant steel and that, you see H. But if it's just corrosion resistant steel, then it's AN4 Charlie 17. It's so those are your three combinations, yes. So you can't, can you have a dash or a cat plate with holes or corrosion? Sorry, I think I missed, because I know you said you can't have cat plate and holes. Okay, what does dash mean? <coughs> cat plate. <-cat> <coughs> what does the C mean? Corrosion resistant. Two different materials. So you can never have a combination. You would never have a cat plated corrosion resistant steel. And you never have a dash and an H. That's like saying you have a Ford Chevy. Dash and C. Well, why can't you have cat plated in a hole? You can. Oh, okay. All right. So that's just an H. That's a cat plated is implied. Implied, okay. Implied. Okay. Well, kind of. It's like this. An A mm -hmm. and four dash. The dash is still there. They just do that. <laughs> so could you would it be okay to still have a dash and then H? wouldn't be incorrect, right? That'd be wrong, because you tried to order it. Like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. It's not quite. I mean, okay. I guess I know what you meant, but it's like, no. It's H in place of the dash. That okay. is the proper part number. So if you said AN4 dash hotel 17, you'd be wrong. And it would take kind of a jerk to say, I don't know what you're talking about. I would say, you mean hotel 17. Yeah, you can real point at um, it. You let them put it in the computer. For clarification, uh, you know what I would say? Sorry. I, I'll forget though. I'll come back to you. If you wanted an AN4 Hotel 17, I tell you I'm all out of them, but I do have an AN4 Hotel 18. Yes, I'm not worried. <laughs> <laughs> if you get that joke, fine. Okay, back to you. Okay, so. So the. What are the after those are called? Like the H and the C? Those always go after. The diameter yes. before the length? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Then on the end of it, we could have nothing. Nothing. <coughs> or we could have an A. Or something. So that's the something. Nothing or something. Something is an A. There's the two things you can have. Either nothing or an A. So really it's just an A. A is absent the whole. Absent is spelled what? A, B, S, T, N, T. Absent the whole. What hole are we talking about? <laughs> that right there. So would this have an A on it? No. Or no A. No A. So hey, let's talk about. Let's just say this is a three eighths inch diameter <laughs> that is two and a half inches long. What would the part number be for this? Band three. Band and six. it is. Six. Yeah, it's Band six. It's corrosion. It's a uh, cat plate. So AN6 dash. AN6 because it's 3 8 which is 6 eight. 6 16 mm. Hotel. Hotel because? Mm. It's got a head hole. Head hole. What's my dash uh, length? 24. 24. 24. 24 because it's 2 inches and 4 eighths. 4 eighths is half an inch. And that's it. And that's it because there's a hole. If I filled in the hole, then it would be a? A. 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 Absent the hole. 
Are there ever bolts with a hole in the head and the shape? Sure. Right, right there. It's, it's exactly I know, but I was, I mean, you know, it's a drawing also. <laughs> All right, so we could take that question one step further. Wait a minute, why would you put a hole on both ends? Because clearly the hole in the head is for safety, which implies that this went into a blind hole. But the hole in the shank implies that there's a, there's a castellated nut with a cotter pin in it. Mm -hmm. Why would you both safety and cotter pin it? Redundancy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, there's a lot of applications where, what's that? If you don't want the bolt to rotate for some reason? No, no. There's a lot of applications where this bolt doesn't need to be safety wired, but the thing next to it does. That's what I was thinking. Oh, so it's like... And so it's got to have something to safety yeah. too, so this is the safety at two thing. Mm. Buddy. Buddy. Mm. I don't like that. It's a buddy bolt. Yeah. Got to pick your safety, buddy. <laughs> All right, since I'm way off um, <laughs> my notes here, let me see if I everything. Yeah, so far. Yeah. Oh, links. Links come in dash three all the way. It's not important, but links. Where's my link? Links come in dash three all the way to a dash 80. So what is that translated to? Eight inches. Eight inches. Eight inches. Three, Three eight. eights up to eight inches. They have head markings. The head markings for a standard and bolt. Head markings. An asterisk. Four plus. Um, about half the bolts I have seen actually instead of a plus, they put an X. <laughs> we like to think about that. <laughs> That's a bolt rotating a few degrees. So it has an X. Just rotate your hand. Why not? Yeah. And you do it together. Someone from my left side the left. You said, oh, I get. Drive it home. Okay, for those of you a little bit slow on the uptake, this is kind of a joke because if you take a plus <laughs> and you rotate it a little bit, it becomes yeah. an uh, X. All right, so if, uh, now, it, it was a joke now, but I'm saving you the embarrassment of coming up to me later and saying this doesn't have an X. It doesn't have a plus. It only has an X. What do I do? Thank you, sir. I can sleep at night. <laughs> All right, so we did that. Uh, what's wrong with this slide? Yes, yeah, is Air Force. No. <laughs> Sorry, I like my Air Force. Place, have but... All right. Um, bolt material. What kind of material is this? Cat blade steel. What about an aluminum bolt? Uh, they don't make standard and hardware and aluminum bolts. It would be an aluminum, but it would be a special bolt. All right. Um, here we go. So grip length, nominal length, we got all that. What what material are these made out of? Cad. Cad plated. What color is it when the cad plating wears away? Silver. Silver. Silver, just like it is over there. What is cad? Cadmium? Yeah, what is cadmium? It's, it's a corrosion resistant. Coating. It's to me, it's like similar to like chrome, but it's not. Oh, it's a dip. Or like yeah. they dip it's it. Plating, like it's plating. Yeah. yeah, there used to be a place downtown. I don't think they'd be there anymore. I mean, even in my day, it was hard to believe there was a place in the middle of downtown Sacramento that had a chrome shop and plating shop. Wow. <laughs> There's still a chromer in Sacramento. Is there? Yeah, yeah I, I, I forgot the name. I took my I took something to them once. The Sacramento place. They fucked it up. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say. I know it's really bummed me out. Because I need to get some stuff later. Well, you can still take it. Okay. All right, back up one. I do want you to know and understand and be able to recite AN hardware part, AN bolt part numbers. What we just went over. That I would. I, I really want you to do that. All of the other part numbers that we're going to go from here on out are just to make you aware of these types of bolts. I'm going to call them out by name so you can understand it. 
but at no point will I ever expect you to memorize anything beyond this as a part number. Everybody follow? So I think it's easy enough to remember, you know, because A and bolts are so common that you should be able to understand that. Uh, but moving forward, you're okay if you don't. I'll be on the test. <clears throat> All right, so this is the uh, AN 173 through 186 close tolerance bolts. It tends to follow the basic naming, well, let me back up. What's a close tolerance bolt? So there are applications on aircraft. You can imagine that if uh, uh, on a wing spar, a sp the wing sp you guys had now, you know what wing spars are, right? It's the thing that goes, well, it's the stiffness of the wing. In an aircraft, you have carry through spars, and that's what carries the weight from one wing to the other. Uh, if it's a low wing aircraft, it's a very large uh, system, even in a small plane, in a little piper, it's going to be huge. Uh, that carries the weight of the wings. In a plane like mine, the Cessna with the wings on top, my carry through spars are very small. Um, they're, you know, no bigger round than that. It's just a U channel that goes across about yay big, one in the front, one in the back. Is that because you have the, um, what is it, the. They're strutted wings. Yeah. Mm. I was going to say the struts on the wings. Because right? the struts hold it up. Now, the Cessna 177s, the newer 210s, uh, they have cantilever wings. So you look at it, it's a high wing airplane with no struts. They have giant, they're back to the gigantic spars. They're yay big, right, to carry that weight. Anyway, regardless of the type that it is, you can imagine the, the spar comes out, and maybe it's got two prongs that come out and the wing slides in like that. And through them both, you'd have a hole where the bolt goes through, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, well what if the bolt was kind of a bad fit then the wing and the spar would constantly move and hammer each other. You'd have a little bit of movement and what eventually happens? Yeah. Wears yeah. away, yeah. gets worse, and you can grab the wing and clunk, 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 clunk. And then you have to, you know, what's the tolerance on that? How many inches do I? All right, so <laughs> there are applications where a regular AN bolt that is not made to exacting standards, they're mass produced, they're cheap, relatively. You want a bolt that is really a light hammer fit guaranteed to be a light hammer fit the hole that it goes into is not drilled it's drilled near the size and then reamed to perfection and then a close tolerance bolt that has a tolerance uh, i'll tell you a very very close tolerance when they build them and they're expensive because they're exactly the right size is a slight hammer fit into it so there's zero movement whatsoever so that's a close tolerance bolt and that's why you'd want it you wouldn't use it on normal applications. You, like I said, you use it for a wing bolt or something that can have no movement, no relative movement. <clears throat> so that is our close tolerance bolt. So the close tolerance bolt being an example of like a class four hardware? No, because the class has to do with the nut on uh, thread okay. fit. So that's the AN173, uh, sorry, 173, to the AN186, has a standard hex head. Uh, the tolerance is 0 .0005, so one half of a thousandth. The diameter is in sixteenths of an inch after the one. So the AN-174 is? Uh, 73 sixteenths or, or seven inches and three sixteenths? Diameter. So oh, diameter is 74 sixteenths. Yeah, what does that work out to be? Oh, shit. It's uh, just seven sixteenths because the three is the add-on for the front. Uh, oh, yeah. So, sorry. It's just the 4.5, was that, uh, you know, right? Four, four and a half? Yeah, because I, 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 I had looked through the high tolerance. Let me grab mine, just to make sure. Three, blue book? Yeah. Three is the add-on. Oh, yeah, one, two, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Three? 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 Oh, because he wrote 174 there. It's 173. 173 through 186. Close tolerance, 173. I thought I corrected that. <laughs> It just took a minute. Slow. Sometimes it's really good. I did, I really 
screw it over and then we erase my mistakes. <laughs> Run a little bit slow today. 173 to 186. Really oh, on. after the 17. So, uh, last. Uh, oh, it's after 17. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah, yeah so not, an A and 17. One. One, an A and one. So an A and three. Six. Six. Okay. One yeah. seven six. <laughs> so it should be after the 17. 17 or 18. I like that better. I just changed up my notes. Oh, my notes actually say that. All I have to do is just read what I wrote. After the 17. So an A and one seven six is. 616 six, 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 diameter. Diameter. All right. Um, the length. Same as A and bolt. Same as A and bolt. Marked with a <coughs> triangle. That's a head marking. Sometimes on these head markings, you might see other numbers. Um, it's the triangle you're looking for. There, there are manufacturer markings and such. Let me see. Um, used where, um, used in applications. Used where, an interference fit. Fit is what is an interference fit? Uh, it's got a touch. It's got a, it <clears throat> it's need a really tight. Uh, yeah. Need a hammer. Need a hammer. Interference fit is required. Um, it's just gonna be a power. Used where uh, two parts. Bolted together. Two parts are bolted together and subjected to severe load reversals and vibration. Uh, for the close tolerance bolts, uh, it's AM173 through AM18. What do you want me to do about that? I was just, <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious if it's uh, showing the two of the things or if they're available. It, this says the 186. Okay. Maybe that one's right. Maybe this one's right. Which one's approved or accepted? They're neither approved they're or neither accepted. Really. Oh, I'm not going to be able to sleep at night without knowing which one Figure out a way. Well, I guess I'm done. I don't know what the hell you're doing. Sleep during the day. So, with it, when you... Look, there are, sorry, there are so many pieces of hardware. To get down to that Nat's ass of a nuance, I'd let it go. But thank you for pointing that out. Much appreciated. Um... Just make sure you change the AM173 to AM176. Three. 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 No, it's a it's a it's a 178. That was an example. This is going uh, slow. Is that two or a seven? So all right. Wow. Okay, let's just go. All right. So these bolts range in size from, according to my notes, an AN. I'm sorry. Um, AN. One seven one seven three <laughs> to maybe <coughs> an AN one eighty six or possibly I think we got into short circuit. AN <laughs> one eighty we did it very we did we kind of shut up the rest of the night. Or something else. I think we got a new question. Maybe one ninety six, I don't know. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> I think I'll say it and figure out. So, these are mostly cadmium plated too, correct? Yes, they are. 
with you hammering it through there. Would that is an actually an excellent point. <laughs> with you hammering it through, what happens to cat plate? It, yeah. it tends to peel it's right off. <laughs> yeah. So when you knock it back out, guess what? It's no longer cat plated. Yeah. So you are absolutely right. Is it single right. use hardware then, or you probably imagine. want to? You know, <laughs> I, my opinion, it doesn't. I don't know that it says that unless you're reading a manual and it says something to the effect of uh, replace bolt whenever removed. Just because of the nature of where it is, I think I would tend to make it a replaceable item upon removal. Because it's subjected to severe load reversals and vibration. That's your way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, for I your that. sake, you'd say it's consumable. I would, yeah. Okay. But, okay, so what's our big takeaway? Not that the smallest is an AN-173, because is that important? <laughs> No. 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 Or that the biggest is a 186 or possibly 182. Is that important? No. 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 The important part is they're not standard. They're close tolerance. They're used in an area that is subjected to low reversal. So would we want to use a regular AN bolt in this application? No. 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 You would not. What if it fits? No. Probably will fit. No. Okay. <laughs> That's our big takeaway, and so we want to be careful that we're using the right piece of hardware and the right thing. Well, what are you going to do if you're reading the parts book, and the parts manual says that that wing bolt should be an AN 8-20? You better use that bolt then. Then that's what you use, even though you think, wow, close tolerance would work better there. That's not what they want, so you go with what they want. The engineer knows that. But if it says an AN... 170 something or 180 something like well, it's the same size as an AM bolt because it's both in 16s. Yeah, you're not doing that. So. All right, we got a question. So the AN 186 is a one inch diameter. Uh, 186. Would that be a one inch diameter? They are in sixteenths of an inch, so I believe that would be correct. So 186. Let me see. Yeah, that's right. Oh, is it because that one thing turns over the front of the seven to the eight? So like, like, yeah, so it's like a sixteen, not a sixteen. Okay. Yeah, we can look at this. So one seven three is uh, okay. three sixteenths. Yeah. Yeah. Sixteen. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. This would be one eighty for one. Nine. That'd be eighty. Eighty one. So eighty would so be three sixteenths, four sixteenths, five sixteenths, eight nine sixteenths. Um, 16, 16. Yes. 86 right. makes sense. 9 16. 10 16. 10 16. What's 10 16s? We're about to be 5 8. 5 8. 5 8. 5 8. Oh, yeah. 5 8. 75 8. Right? Just doing the, doing the simple math. Mm -hmm. yeah. 4 16 5 16 6 16 which would be. Um, On the on something like a wing bolt where you have a close tolerance bolt going through, or anything, I guess that has a close tolerance bolt going through it. The hole that it's going through when you pull them out, does that also is it? Uh, there's like a hardened some sleeve or something that goes through it, or do those wear out? It's not. It's almost like we don't talk about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we want to discuss that because when somebody points out that, well, yeah, but so. Um, we don't talk about it. It's not real. Yeah. Probably you would have to measure it and make sure that it's within a certain diameter for return to service use. And if it's not, then it would have to be machined and bushed or something. Make sure it's not just like close tolerance fits in really loosely. All right. Any other things on close tolerance bolts? Yes, yeah, it's, it's close. Yeah. It's Marked with a what? Triangle. 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 <coughs> Said some Illuminati shit, yes, yeah, me, but. Okay. All right. <laughs> this is where things can get a little confusing because. <coughs> that's a drilled head bolt, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, that's a drilled head bolt. Well, it's actually an AN bolt with, a dr with the head drill. So if I were going to say something, I'd say it's an AN bolt with the head drill. These are called drilled head bolts. Easy to say to you, right? Yes. The easy to safety wire. Yep. Um, oh, where they have the multiple drill. 
I want to say there's a issue here, I think. The MS-2007-3 and 7-4s, so I'm pretty sure. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the MS-2007-3s and the MS-2007-4s, the 7-3s, I think, are fine thread. Yes, these are fine thread. And these are coarse thread. So let me see the example three. Here's an example 04 14. So this number right here, four, is the diameter. So diameter is going to then be in. 16ths, and it's 1 and 4 eighths long, so it's the same convention. So, same as a n. So, in regards to that, let's say we're working the, um, the a n hardware lab project. Okay. Would it be acceptable to? Uh, write down either or, like I could, would be acceptable to write down either 20073 or AN7, um, AN, the AN part number instead? Yes, be acceptable. Oh. Try not to use NAS numbers. Most of my answers are either AN or NS. So, so if it's an AN7 for 2073, for 2074, it would be. For the AN number would be different. For say it again now. So the it says MS two hundred and then seventy three. Seventy three. Same as AN seventy four DAC. Oh, uh, fourteen. Yeah. What would it be for the course thread then for the AN number? I don't know. Something else. Something else. I didn't even write that in here. Okay, then it doesn't matter. Because this one, in my mind, I converted already to the MS, but I think it'd be the same thing. Would it be the same thing? Yeah, it'd just be a. You know what? I feel like this maybe is wrong. Maybe this should be the same as a. Maybe this should be a three here. Yeah. I think so. I think that's really should be a three. So like a seven, well like a seven yeah. thirty, like a seven three four tack fourteen. Wait. So this would be an A and seventy three. So you just follow. See seventy three. 73, 74, 75. But, uh, okay. I think what they're doing here is uh, the 73 and 74 differentiate between whether or not it's coarse and fine thread, and then the numbers afterwards apply to the um, diameter. Yeah. I literally said that. <laughs> so you're right. Thank you. So the 73 is fine thread, the 74 is coarse thread, and so we just convert it over. So this be the same as AN74, AN73. And then your diameter goes after the so these. Then everything after is going to be exactly the same. Okay, so. You still put the dashes in the AN? It goes dash like over. I think so, yeah. 14. yeah. I think so. Just just use the MS number. Yeah, there, yeah. problem solved. Boom. Oh. So, um, so this, um, 73 and the 74 don't mean anything in terms of length, like the 70. The so it's a dash, look at dash 4, dash 14. So the base part number is, is the MS20073. Mm -hmm. That means it is a bolt that is drilled at every single flat of the head. And the length is then dash something. I'm uh, sorry, the diameter, then the length is dash something. See? So they're just, uh, it's just not showing the diameter as like when you're showing, it says the AN73-14. Okay. So, it, oops. Uh, there's a problem. I used to control Z and then it locks this thing up and erases like half of what I wrote. So, MS2007-3. Dash 04. Dash 13. There, there's your part number. Yeah, that's the part number. So I know that so uh, after so after two zero zero seven three, the zero four is the diameter of the bolt itself, and then the one three is going to be the length. 
Okay. What was your question? And then on so for AN where it's the AN seventy one through eighty three, I think it was. All right. So then we'll say or we could have called it an AN seven three dash zero four dash one three. Okay. Got I guess. I mean I don't and uh, and then not to make not to add to You're going to <laughs> an AN eighty one, what would that differentiate in both? I don't even have it in front of me, I don't know. Fair enough. <laughs> No idea. I'm cool with that answer. <laughs> Thank you. Say, do I have that oh, on here? Oh, yeah. World Head Bolt, 73 to 81. That's 73 to 81. Because when it's saying to 81, that's implying it's a similar situation to what we have with the um, closed tolerance bolts, where it's like the last number is the diameter of the bolt. Yes, the last number is, yes. Water. Right? No. I yeah, I'm not, uh, not sure how to convert. I know what we can do. Let's see. I'll do that. <laughs> uh, okay. Next one I got on here is. The NES 1103s to the NES 1120s. <laughs> This is a high strength shear bolt, which means you can, if you tie light between it, uh, behind it, I think you can see through it, is what that shear means. Wow. <laughs> what? Shear? I didn't even get that. Different kind of shear. Shear bolt. Oh, shear with two E's. Yeah, high strength shear bolt. The length is grip only. <clears throat> Don't count the threads. Why? Because they're very, very concerned about what your grip is, and they want to make sure that that is set. And so it's only got a little bit of threads on it, just enough for, uh, generally speaking, a shear nut, a very thin <coughs> nut. Why? Because it's only in shear loads. Sheer loads. A shear load is a load that is uh, my wing example of my wing. That would be a good shear loading. So it's an also be a nice thing for a wing bolt. Actually, that's usually what wing bolts are. Is that what that big divot? Is? Yeah, big, the big, uh, uh, and you can use Sorry, it for golf tees. I was just gonna say <laughs> that at the same time. Let's yeah, see. if you don't mind single-use golf clubs. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we've looked at a couple bolts, right? That's the point here. Yeah. Told you it's not about the part number. I'm not going to test you on the part number. You don't need to know the part number. What I'm after is that you understand there are different bolts for different applications. We have the standard AN bolt. Cheap, relatively cheap. Mass produced, not to the exacting size. Large tolerances, All right? Then we looked at... Close tolerance. The close tolerance bolt, which is what kind of fit? Close. Uh, what interference? Interference fit. Hammer, hammer fit, fit. which um, <laughs> is held to very close tolerance, half a thou. That's very, very. Uh, remember, a piece of paper is uh, roughly three to four thousandths. Wow. So, Wait, I have a one eighth of the thickness of the piece of paper is the tolerance wow. on that. <laughs> right? And so. Then we looked at the uh, MS20073, for lack of a better name, that's or the, the drilled head bolt that comes in both um, fine and coarse thread. What do you think that one's mostly used for? What kind of nut would you use on that? You wouldn't. You wouldn't. That's not really a bolt that uses a nut. That is something that is a blind hole kind of a bolt. It's screwing something through that's obviously going to be safety wired, thus all of the the heads and the holes, right? Then we get to the high strength shear bolt. This is the first one I've looked at that's strictly for shear. In fact, it's so dedicated to being a shear loading that what's special about the threads? Very little. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They're very short. Well, You're not gonna get a tall nut on it. We don't, we don't measure that in length. And you don't even consider that. It's just enough for a, sh a very uh, short nut. And the head would be a little bit smaller too, it looks like, a little bit shallower head. No, no, same, standard okay. wrench sizing. Okay, um, questions so far? Yeah, yeah it looks more shallow. 
Oh, yeah, the head's not real tall. That's what you mean. Yeah, it's not very tall. Okay, let's take a break. Oh. <clears throat>